that famous golfer, Isaac Newton, says that the harder you swing, the further the ball will go. To Isaac, it's as easy as... One, ball flight distance is a function of clubhead speed at impact. Two, clubhead speed at impact is a function of angular acceleration. And three, angular acceleration is a function of torque. It's all very well for armchair golfers like Newton to talk, but he didn't know that God threw a spanner in the works by giving us strong arms to swing through trees. And in cricket, a strong arm can get you a birdie. It's the ball in the air, and with about as much accuracy as a Patriot But when you swing on the golf course, Throwing the club at the ball like a cricketer just throws oh. you in the trees. Oh dear, he's moving way down. The horizontal trajectory of a right-handed throw is anti-clockwise, which puts clockwise spin on the ball, just like a banana kick. Oh. Trying to hit the ball hard just gives you a slice. So what should you do instead? If I had to give advice, one word of advice for the golf for, for life and people with playing, it would be tempo. It would be the thing that we worked on, I worked on all my life. And I still today, when I play, the same thoughts. Just for the pure reason, if, 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 if your tempo's good, you, you, you minimise the errant shots and uh, you'll ultimately get the best out of yourself. I look through with it, Bill. Oh, look at that one. What a heroic finish this is. What a beauty. Unless you're willing to play golf in shoes made out of Coke cans, in order to synchronize your swing to get your tempo in the groove, you need to pause first and then take five. You can kid yourself that your body is like a spring. But it isn't. For example, if you turn your head to the left, it doesn't try to spring back to the right. <laughs> Muscles aren't springs. The back spring... <laughs> The backswing goes one way, and then the downswing goes the other. So all the muscles in your body that brought the club to the top of your swing have to stop contracting, and others have to start. That's a non-trivial synchronization problem. I don't look now. So it makes sense not to rush the transition from Ooh. backswing to downswing. <laughs> Now watch these two shots One, two, at actual three, normal four, speed. At the top the of the swing, you'll observe that for a fraction of a second, there's a pause as the club changes direction. The same swing in slow motion shows how a slow backswing lessens the danger of starting downward too quickly. It is very necessary for the player to be perfectly balanced when he starts hitting. For the club head to reach maximum speed exactly at the bottom of the downswing, it should accelerate all the way down, a bit like a Walter Lewin pendulum. Walter's pendulum has just one arm, but a golf swing pendulum is five-armed, each arm pivoting about the end of the one above. A pendulum is a weight suspended from an anchor from which the weight can pivot or swing freely under the influence of gravity. If you look simply at a clock, an old grandfather clock that you might have in your living room or your hallway, the thing that goes back and forth is the pendulum. And it's the simplest of linear motion about an arc. What happens is you can use physics to, to allow the forces to do the work for you. That's not true. Gravity does help. But most of the work driving the golf swing pendulum is done by your muscles. From a practical point of view, the key questions are 
Which muscles? And in which order should they work? There we go. Three of the die. One more. The double pendulum motion of the arms and wrists is common knowledge, but it's only the last chapter of the whole swing story, because the arm wrist double pendulum itself swings the end of a shoulder turn pendulum, which swings at the end of a hip turn pendulum, which swings at the end of a weight shift pendulum. Iron Byron doesn't move its body weight, which is mounted on a wide four-legged base to stop it falling over from the momentum of the swinging club. It doesn't make a hip turn or shoulder turn either. It only models the double pendulum of arm and hand movement. Weight shift swings from right foot at the top of the backswing to left foot at impact. It's a lateral movement rather than a rotational one, but it's a movement that should smoothly accelerate, just like a pendulum does. The speed of the club head is the sum of the speeds of each of its five arms. For them all to reach top speed right at the bottom of the whole swing, each arm must start swinging after the one it's attached to does. This is called lag and it applies to each and every arm of the five-armed pendulum, as we'll see in detail. Walter's pendulum has its pivot at the top, but the golfer's compound pendulum has its central pivot at the bottom. So, let's check out the bottom. So, what you want to do is you want to keep your head still, your setup angles maintained like this, and use your hips thighs and abs and try and feel that stretch. To see why the five pendulum theory isn't just theory, it really does work in practice. The best place to begin is at the end, that's to say at impact. Here are Bobby Jones and Rory McElroy in action almost 80 years apart. Their impact positions have several differences but it's what they have in common that counts and that is that the center of gravity is already moving across the left foot. The right foot is starting to float. Of the five pendulums, the one carrying the heaviest bob is the weight shift. Its bob is the whole weight of the golfer. The heavier the mass, the more energy it takes to move it, so it makes sense that it should be the slowest moving of the five pendulums and hence the one at the centre of the imaginary apparatus. In the two-arm pendulum, the inside part starts to move first. The outer part holds its angle until about halfway through. The two pendulum would quickly become chaotic if the outer part, the golfer's wrists, were to start rotating before the arms or more to the point before the left arm, since the right arm is only along for the ride and just fine tunes its steering. The principle of the inner part starting to move before the outer part extends to all five parts of the five part pendulum. So the first thing to move at the top of the backswing should be the weight shift, as Amy explains. You have to use the correct muscles, which would be lower body muscles rather than upper body muscles to initiate. Plus, you have to have the correct order of uncoiling your coil. So basically, it should look like this. You should be using your thighs, hips, and abs to bring the upper body through. So you have to start using this, lower body first. But a lot of amateurs actually start the downswing transition with their hands a lot. So if you start with the hands, a lot of times you will cast, lose the leg. Um, and sometimes you would use the upper body like this too much and you will probably come over the top, which is no good. And sometimes a lot of people actually initiate correctly with the lower body, but they may use it the wrong way and spin the hips. And it also causes over the top, which is going to create a lot of side spin. At the top of the backswing, 
the golfer's body weight is almost completely on the right foot. Bobby actually lifts his left heel well off the ground. And at impact, the weight is moving over the left foot and continuing forwards. If it weren't for the force of the club swinging back around during the follow-through, the golfer would fall forwards into a walk. Gary Player sometimes actually does walk forward through the shot. The next two pivots in the chain of the five pendulum are the hip turn and shoulder turn. These rotate about the spine, which should be at right angles to the swing plane. The hips turn back about half as much as the shoulders, but by impact they've turned further round than the shoulders. This is called clearing the left side. So through the downswing, hips and shoulders rotate at about the same rate as the upper body unwinds its coil. The turn of the hips is free and ahead of the rest of the stroke. And then we come to the last two pivots, the double pendulum of arms and hands, which we've already looked at. As the shoulders unwind, gravity helps the arms to move down, with a little help from your back muscles. It all happens naturally, provided you do it in the right order. But it requires conscious effort to prevent your right arm and hand from trying to get in on the act and to maintain your wrist hinge until halfway down. There isn't enough time during a downswing for your consciousness to regulate anything, so the practice ground is where you teach your muscles what to do and when. On the course, as you address the ball, you may find it helpful to remember a mental image that Bobby Jones finds helpful to him. I like to feel that I'm hitting a backhand blow with the right hand catching up with the left on that impact. Thinking of hitting the ball with the back of your left hand reminds you to keep your right hand out of it, and it helps you to model your body motion on that of a properly executed left-handed backhand stroke in tennis. You first want to think about transferring your weight from the end of the backswing through the follow-through. The weight has to leave the left foot or the back foot and transfer the weight to the front foot. That's done during the follow-through. I want you to think of swinging through the ball, not at the ball. Swing through the ball. Notice how the player moves his weight forwards into the shot. Flowing weight shift is as vital to the golf downswing as it is to the tennis backhand. It's the foundation of smooth acceleration. Modern golf theory emphasizes athleticism, and Rory's swing is a crouching whirlwind. Rory at four. Buckle up. <laughs> that... There's a lot, not many folks take it up to the right, needs a break. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure, <laughs> why not? Just silliness. Hold on, this hole is 477 yards, ladies and gentlemen. However, as you can see, Rory's swing speed from the start of the downswing to impact is only one hundredth of a second quicker than Bobby's much more relaxed looking technique. Now watch these two shots at actual normal speed. One, two, three, four. 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 Finally, a word of warning. Ignore Tony's advice at your own peril. I looked over Jordan, what did I see? Coming for to carry me home A band of angels coming after me Coming for to carry me home <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> 